So I believe that the vertical farming industry is just new. It's just starting out. We're still in the infancy of what this technology and what this trend actually can do in the world. And because of this, I see a high, high possibility of people succeeding with this, but they have to. A lot of venture-backed businesses in vertical farming are failing, a lot are going bankrupt. And in this video, we are going to cover, is it too late to begin a vertical farm? Is it too late to start a vertical farming business? That's what we are going to cover in this video. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Anas and I have been a vertical farmer for the last six and a half years. We have been growing microgreens and mushrooms, salads, herbs. We've been testing a lot of different kinds of varieties to grow in a vertical farm. We've grown our own vertical farm to become a market leader in our own country. And today we are so lucky because we are consulting other people as well around Europe and beyond. And we are helping you become a better vertical farmer and a better business owner in the space of vertical farming. If you like this content, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. And let's get into the video. So during this video, we are going to cover the trends that we see in the marketplace, the general sentiment of the customers and of the business in general, and also bring a conclusion if it's too late to begin vertical farming today. So we've seen a lot of other vertical farmers, other venture-backed vertical farms going bankrupt these last years, actually. So a lot of these venture-backed businesses have a hard time establishing themselves and becoming profitable. That they have shown a perspective to an investor and in general that perspective was not a reality because they were not able to become profitable. So because of this, we see a lot of negativity for the industry. There's many different arguments for and against. We can grow a lot more on less space, but we also require some energy doing that. We can save a lot on our water bill and we're able to get rid of pesticides and control the environment in a much better way. But it's also high energy intensive and there's a lot of things that are both good and bad for vertical farming. That's why it's not always a guaranteed business to succeed in. And because of this, it can be difficult because it's a great idea, but if it's not financially operational in the sense that it turns a profit, then it's gonna not work. So it needs to, of course, work like any other business, you need to be able to turn a profit. If you're not able to turn a profit, then it's not a good business to be in. And if we look at the trends of vertical farming, we see that there's a growth rate of 13%. If we look until 2030 from here, in 2005, we see a 13% projected growth rate in vertical farming in general. So we see a general trend that it's becoming more and more interesting to support local farmers because we understand that when we are supporting our local farmers we are also supporting our local community and we are helping bring value to the community and, and that's a, a growing trend that we see. So there's definitely a sentiment in the market that we want to support our local farmers and we want to do that because local small farmers they care more for their plants, they're able to figure out if there's a pest issue and instead of using pesticides we use more uh, like uh, other other ways of controlling these pests like these fly traps for example you can also use uh, animals and flies other insects that are very beneficial to get rid of pests uh, when we are thinking about large scale farms they are more intensive in in terms of that they are higher profit oriented so that means that they are more inclined to use pesticides and herbicides to get rid of problems because if you have a big farm and something goes wrong, then you need to get rid of the problem very fast. And the easiest way to do this is with pesticides. So this is something that small local farmers are able to battle in another way. And because of this, it's, it's a lot less filled with chemicals when it comes from your local farm small local vertical farms uh, and small regenerative agriculture is a great way and a great trend that we are seeing and the sentiment of the consumers are going very much into that they're interested in local food 
local produced food that are produced sustainably and circular as much as possible. I saw there's also another statistic that says that the 70 to 90 percent of the consumers would like to buy products that are grown in their own country. So if it's imported from another country and flown away from hundreds or thousands of miles, then if they, it's compared to locally grown food, then consumers would more like to buy the locally farmed food. I don't know what you are thinking and how, how your opinion is on that, but I agree that I would more like to, to buy food from someone who's just down the street or maybe 10 kilometers away than to buy a product that has been flown from another country that has been harvested four days ago because it's when when they have to import these foods they have to harvest them and then they have to pack them and put them on trucks and then put them on distribution centers and from these distribution centers distribute it out and that's a process that takes multiple days so we're able to actually grow food that are more fresh and more alive and the the faster you consume the food the more nutrients it also contains so that's something that consumers in general are becoming more and more aware of and that's that's a, also a, a great point in why vertical farming is actually a good thing so if we just take things into a, a bigger perspective we had traditional farming for thousands and thousands of years and the greenhouse industry started in the 1700s and the greenhouse industry is quite big by now the traditional farming industry is also very big and if you want to go in as a traditional farmer you need to invest millions and millions in tractors and equipment and you hope for the best in that the weather outside will be a good season if it's not a good season you can lose your whole crop and that's a high risk and not so high reward anymore and because of this something like green the greenhouse industry was going in and taking over a lot of the produce handling compared to traditional farming because you can control the environment in a better sense in a greenhouse and in the greenhouse industry a lot of these growers have become huge we have huge farms all over the world with big greenhouses producing tomatoes and cucumber and a lot of different varieties of food that we are able to optimize in the growth because of it's in the greenhouse where we can control the environment better. And if we look at vertical farming, it's only in the last 15 years that vertical farming really has gotten, gotten traction. With, with the new technology trends in LED technology and the way that the LED industry is getting better and better and more affordable, it makes it possible for the LED lights grown indoors to control the environment even better than in a greenhouse. Because in a greenhouse it can control, you can control it great, but if it's winter time and it's very cold outside, then it's very, really difficult to heat up your whole greenhouse and keep being competitive in a market where it's just as easy to just get it flown from Africa or South America or some other place like that. So it's not competing in price, but the LED technology has made it possible to figure new ways of growing crops to control the environment much better, to be able to actually compete with the prices. Because I believe that if you want to make a profitable business in this, then you need to be able to compete with the prices. Uh, uh, you can lay a, a bit above the traditional farming produce or the greenhouse produce that has been imported but in general it's great to be able to stay competitive on the same prices because if a consumer can pick from a locally grown product pesticide free and a imported product that's grown a long way from where it's consumed it's been harvested uh, four days ago and and the prices are the same then it's a no-brainer for the consumer to make the decision of what products to invest in and invest in the small local grown farm produce that that's possible. So if we take that into perspective, vertical farming is only 15 years old around that. In my opinion, it's 15 years old. It's, it's older than that because in the, it started in the 90s with uh, Dixon Despommier in New York wanting to grow products and produce on 
top of the skyscrapers. Uh, then he figured that we could grow it inside the old warehouses that were not used. That it really started in Western culture there. I think vertical farming has been grown a lot in the Asian market for, for years above that. So be, before this, the Asian market has been looking into vertical farming as well. So it really started in Asia, but it, it started in Western culture in the 1990s. And the last 15 years, the LED technology has been at a point where it's possible to be able to compete with the greenhouses. And because of this, there is a, a great movement and trend going into vertical farming, but there are some issues with the high energy costs. So it needs to be set up so financially disciplined that it's possible to make a product that is profitable um, because the big venture-backed companies usually have high exec executive salaries they are not 100% sure how the market works before they go in and make a huge investment if they have a big farm and something goes wrong much of it is ruined and that's a high risk so the bigger you are the bigger your Failure rate is also when when something goes wrong. So in the conclusion of this, we believe that the small local farmers who can be very financially disciplined and bootstrap this is the best way to start a vertical farm and start being able to compete because we have already seen that the venture-backed vertical farms has not worked in the sense that they thought they would work. And because of this, we see a lot of the successful vertical farms are the ones who started from the bottom and got their customers little by little and then worked with the customers, made the mistakes in the beginning, figured how it, it did not work and then learned from these mistakes and learned the operational excellency of how to run a farm and how to manage communication with your customers and how to make sure that if something goes wrong, then it, everything doesn't go wrong and you exactly know what's wrong because you've been there from the beginning and you've done all the research and development, all the hard work of spending years of research and development into this and that is why the smaller farms who is not in debt, who's not taking on big debt to do this but actually buys a system makes that profitable and then when that money is back invest that in a new system and then in a new system and then takes it little step by step instead of the big steps that we see have not uh, worked so i believe that the vertical farming industry is just new, it's just starting out. We are still in the infancy of what this technology and what this trend actually can do in the world. And because of this, I see a high, high possibility of people succeeding with this, but they have to really know the market, really know what herbs are possible to grow and are mastering those herbs and salads and microgreens and mushrooms and strawberries and what else is possible to actually do in a farm like this. So I hope this answered your question. Is it too late to start a vertical farm? In my opinion, I don't believe it is. I've worked in vertical farming for six and a half years. The years before this, we have been working in the hydroponics industry and the horticulture industry, supplying equipment for people who are growing this. And then we chose to start out and become growers ourselves. And today we are operating our own farms in Denmark, but we are also assisting growers all over Europe. So if you need our help on a consulting basis, then we are also helping other growers around the world. There is some info in the description of this video. I hope that this answered some of your questions and I hope that you are going to become a much better vertical farmer because you are now more informed about what's good and what's something that you need to be aware of and what challenges you need to overcome in your business. So take care, see you in the next video.